Hello again and welcome to Programming and Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to be going over making new tables with queries as well as inserting or appending data to other tables. So let's get started. I'm going to back out here and go into our Access database. I'm going to click on the Create tab and remember I want to make a new query. So I'm going to click on the Query Design and it's giving me all the tables that I can add. Now right now I'm just going to close out of this. I don't want to go into this just yet. I want to show you that here in the design tab I have the option of select query, make table query, append query, update query, cross tab query, delete query, and then there's these other ones called union pass through and data definition. And I'm not going to get into these here during this particular course those are going to be covered in a more advanced course if we can get into it. But for right now, just know that a select query is the type of query that we were doing before, where we just wanted to display information. Now I'm going to click on Make Table. And what this is going to do is pop up a little box that says, well, okay, what's the new table name that you want to, that you want to make? So I'm going to say TBL0 customers underscore temp. Now, this isn't necessarily a naming convention that everybody needs to follow or anything. You can decide to make your table names however you want. But the reason I have my table named this way is that the zero indicates to me this is only a table that I, this is a table I plan on basically only using to, um, you know, it's going to have a lot of changes to it. I'm going to constantly be making it or dropping it, um, you know, deleting it or adding data to it all the time. It's just kind of a, a table that I plan on messing in and moving data around within, but it's not meant to be a permanent table that I'm planning on getting a lot of data from to present to the user. Then this underscore temp just basically tells me this is a temporary table that I plan on actually deleting at some point uh, in the application. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice that I don't have any new tables created at this point because nothing has happened. The query has not actually run. All I've done is I've started to make a query that says, hey, I want to make a table when you when at the time that you do run. So now that we know what the name of the table is that we're going to make, we need to figure out what we're going to fill this new table with because we need to give it some data in order to make the table and, and give it some information. So I'm going to click on... I'm going to right click on the designer, I'm going to click on show table, and that brings up that box again that tells us, you know, here's our queries that I can pick from, uh, or tables. So I could make up a, I could just select a, a query here that has, that presents the information that I want, and then I can make a table with the information from that query if I wanted to. But for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to click on a table here and I'm going to take the customers table and I'm going to select add. Okay, I'm going to go, go ahead and close this. Now, um, I want to take the customer names from the table one customers and I'm going to make that one of the fields in my new table. So I'm going to take the information, just so you're understanding what's going on here, from the table one customers I'm getting the customer name uh, information. I'm getting the customer names in this table. And I'm going to be adding it to customer name in my new table. But what if I don't want to name the column customer name in my new table? Well, luckily for us, I can do it this way. I can go in here and say customer. And I'm going to say underscore name, put a colon and a space. And that will then actually rename That'll give us a new column name of customer name and fill it with the customer name from Table 1 Customers. You see how that works? So I can actually rename the name of my columns in my new table. They don't have to match what's already in here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, before I click Run, I just want to show you the View button and the Run button. You may have been wondering what the difference is between these two things. If I click on the view, what this does is it gives me a preview of the results. This is what I can expect the results to look like. Whereas if I click on the run option, oh, let me go back here, go into the design view. Okay, if I click on the run, that will actually perform the action 
of running the query. It will actually run the query, not just give me the results in a preview. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Run, and it says, hey, wait a minute, you're about ready to paste four rows into a new table. Are you sure? I'm going to go ahead and click Yes. And you'll notice that new table that I named pops up here, Table 0 Customers Temp. And if I look inside of it, there is my customer name column that I gave it the name of, and Metro Properties, etc. You notice here, Metro Properties is listed twice. Let's say I didn't want that to happen. Let's say I wanted my new table to only show specific, uh, you know, unique names. Well, there's a way I can do that. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this table that we just created just by right clicking and clicking on delete. And that will pop me. Are you sure you want to remove it? Yes, I do. Okay, now it's gone. Now, remember how in our select queries, when we wanted to group information together so that we only had you know, say the one customer name each, and then I was doing a count of how many were in that particular zip code. Uh, well, there's a way you can do that here also in your queries, even if you're making a table. Again, I can click on the totals button, and that gives me the total field here that I can just select group by. And remember when I group by, that's what is going to group the names together. And I could see that if I click on the on the view button, you can see that now Metro Properties is only listed one time. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go back into my design view. I'm going to click on Run. It says yes. And look inside here. Lo and behold, there are my three companies. And Metro Properties is only one with the customer name as the name of the column. All right, so I'm going to close out of this. And I don't need to keep my query. If I could, it's, it is a good idea to save your queries if you plan on using them at some point during your code, especially when we get into the VBA side. You can make a query, and then in your code you can call that query to run. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and not save this. So I'm going to click No. Because we're going to move on now to appending data to your table. So I'm going to take this table that we just created, and I'm going to make another company. I'm going to call it random oops, companies. Okay, so that's my new company, random companies. All right, that's only in my temp table. Now, what happens if I want to add these new com these companies back into my table one customers? Well, the way I can do that is simply by going into a new query. So I'm going to go to Create Design Query. And I'm going to close this real quick, and I'm going to select Append here. So again, I'm hitting the Design tab, clicking Append button, and now it's going to ask me Append to which table. Which table is it then that I need to add data to? And that would be the Table 1 Customers table. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then now, again, just like I did with making table, I basically need to build my select query. So I'm going to right click anywhere in the designer, click on show table, select the temp table because that's where the data is that I want to add, and click on add. And I want to double click on customer name. And I just want to view this real quick. I should see, oh, I got to have a destination field. Sorry, forgot about that. My append to, okay? This is where I'm deciding what field am I going to be putting the customer name into? So I'm going to select on append to customer name. So now I'm ready to go. I'm just going to preview this real quick. You can see there's the four companies that I'm going to be adding to the table. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and run it. So go back to the design view, click on run. It says I'm about to append four rows. Click yes. And let me close this table one customers and then reopen it. We should see our additional companies. Again, random companies, metro properties, hyphened corp, wheel uh, hamster wheels inc. One of the things you may have noticed is that it's not handling duplicates. I told it 
to add these new rows. And so it did. Okay? As long as I'm not conflicting with the ID field. If I was trying to add Metro properties with an ID field of 1, then I would get some sort of error from Access saying, hey, wait a minute, I already have an ID field of 1 with Metro properties as the customer name. The only field that is required to be unique is this ID field. There's nothing in this table 1 customers table that says that the name has to be unique. All right, just try to remember that. You're going to run into times where you're going to see this happen and you're going to you're going to try to figure out okay, how the heck am I going to go in here and remove these duplicates? Well, when we get to the deleting um, the deleting queries, we're going to handle some of this uh, some of these problems, okay? So hopefully you guys understand that. Hopefully the making tables and inserting data or appending data to tables makes sense to you. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message uh, on YouTube, and I will be happy to answer as best as I can. Thank you very much.